Ever wondered what's behind Hollywood's fancy exterior? Check out The Loved One, a 1965 film that takes you behind the scenes of the funeral industry in a funny and sometimes sad way. Get ready for a mix of emotions as you watch amusing, surprising, and touching moments unfold. When did you first see this movie? Any scene that stood out to you? Share your memories and experiences in the comment entrance below. Stay tuned for more interesting insights. The Loved One is a black comedy film that premiered in the year 1965. It offers a satirical take on the funeral industry in Los Angeles. The story revolves around a young British poet named Dennis, who moves to Los Angeles to pursue his writing career. He becomes entangled in the bizarre and macabre world of Whispering Glades, a funeral home where his uncle works. The setting is primarily the extravagant Whispering Glades Cemetery, a place where the superficiality of Hollywood culture clashes with the solemnity of death. Dennis encounters eccentric characters like the funeral director, Mr. Joyboy, his mother obsessed assistant, and Amy Thanatogenes, a cosmetician who specializes in making corpses look their best for the afterlife. As Dennis navigates through this peculiar environment, he finds himself in a romantic entanglement with Amy while also being pursued by a Hollywood starlet named Joyboy. The plot unfolds with dark humor as Dennis grapples with the absurdity of the funeral industry and his own desires. The film received critical acclaim for its biting satire and unconventional storytelling. It won several awards and was praised for its unique take on mortality and the human obsession with appearances. Overall, The Loved One provides a twisted yet humorous exploration of death, love, and the superficiality of Hollywood, making it a memorable addition to the world of black comedy. In the movie The Loved One, which was released in 1965, notable Hollywood figures were drawn to the iconic Ford Thunderbird cars, such as Tab Hunter, Natalie Wood, and Laurie Nelson, who customized their vehicles with unique colors and designs reflecting their personalities. This film marked the final acting role for Liberace. Furthermore, one of the actors in The Loved One, like several others throughout cinematic history, received an Academy Award nomination for portraying a real-life king. This actor joins a distinguished list that includes Charles Lawton, Bezel Rathbone, Lawrence Olivier, and others. The Loved One remains a noteworthy entry in the annals of film history. Released in 1965, The Loved One explores the unique pride of Whispering Glades employees in handling deceased individuals, a Kamalantran trait in the American funeral industry. The movie subtly highlights this unsettling aspect of the profession. In addition to his role in the film, the actor featured in two highly rated episodes of the 1966 Batman television series as Shandal Harry. He shared a good rapport with the cast and crew, often treating them to impromptu recitals after filming concluded. Before appearing in The Loved One, the actor gained acclaim for his performances in other films. He notably won consecutive Best Actor awards at the BAFTA and Oscars for his roles in The Pawnbroker and In the Heat of the Night, a feat only matched by Colin Firth several decades later. His versatility and talent shone through in his various roles, making him a celebrated figure in the film industry. The Loved One stands as another example of his skill and the unique themes explored within the film. In The Loved One, a 1965 film, there are some interesting points to note. Firstly, it features an actor who appeared in three different Batman series. They played the bookworm in the 1966 Batman series and portrayed the Mad Hatter in both Batman, the animated series, and its spin-off, The New Batman Adventures. As Amy tries to get away from Dennis in the movie, she drives past Diamond Jim's restaurant at 6753 Hollywood Boulevard. This location has changed over time and is now a Fredericks of Hollywood store specializing in women's lingerie. Dana Andrews, a well-known actor, was part of the loved one during his busy year in 1965. This film is one of eight movies he made that year, which is the highest number in his long career. These details add to the interesting aspects of the 1965 movie The Loved One, providing insights into its connections with Batman series and the changes in filming locations. Dana Andrews' significant role in the film adds to its importance in his career. The Loved One, based on Evelyn Waugh's novel, underwent potential directorial changes, initially considering Louis Buñuel and later Elaine May for screenplay writing. Alec Guinness, a friend of Waugh's, was envisioned for the role of Dennis Barlow. Screenwriter Terry Southern, known for his controversial novel Candy, introduced the character Maxwell Kenton, portrayed by Milton Berle, not found in Waugh's work. The name was a pseudonym Southern had used previously. The film also featured Ralph Richardson, among others, 
depicted on British commemorative stamps celebrating the old Vic Theatre's 200th anniversary alongside notable actors like Laurence Olivier and Glenda Jackson. In the 1965 film The Loved One, the barrister who represented her in her divorce from Lawrence Harvey was John Mortimer, also a well-known writer. Legend has it that he waived his usual fee in return for her appearing in one of his plays. This movie is mentioned in the opening song to the Rocky Horror Picture Show called Science Fiction. Initially, this film was a box office flop, but has since gained a cult following over the decades. It's now regarded as a groundbreaking example of morbid humor and merciless cultural satire. Its unique blend of dark comedy and social commentary has captured the fascination of audiences. Art Gillian's journey began in Hollywood after his stint in the U.S. Coast Guard. Sharing a room with his brother Walt, Art pursued education at the Dell Powers Professional School. This school, situated off Wilcox Avenue, was a hub for aspiring movie stars. Art, showing a keen interest in figure skating, embraced a new passion and trained at the Polar Palace. His dedication led to winning championships and forming lasting connections with figures like Bob Turk, Bobby Speck, and Joyce Lockwood. While supporting himself through odd jobs, including working at an Orange Julius stand and ushering at Warner Brothers Theater, Art remained steadfast in his love for skating. Despite persistent nudges from friend Dick Clayton to explore acting, Art resisted the idea of wasting time in an acting class. A pivotal moment came when Dick introduced Art to Henry Wilson, a talent manager with a knack for discovering promising talent in Hollywood. Wilson, known for his focus on good looks over acting skills, had a reputation that raised eyebrows. Nonetheless, Art ventured to Wilson's Bel Air residence, setting the stage for a significant shift in his life. The narrative takes a turn to shed light on a mistaken credit often attributed to Art. Though erroneously linked to a role in The Quiet Man, it is clarified that another actor resembling him is the actual participant in the boxing flashback. The text then shifts to Art's role in founding the Friars Club of Beverly Hills in 1947, located initially at the Savoy Hotel on Sunset Boulevard. Notable personalities such as Jim Lantry Durante, George Jessel, Robert Taylor, and Bing Crosby joined as founding members. The club, famous for its celebrity roasts, moved to Beverly Hills in 1961. In Sumalantrary, Art Julian's Hollywood journey is marked by his transition from the U.S. Coast Guard to figure skating, his encounters with influential figures like Henry Wilson, and his involvement in establishing the Friars Club. In 1965, the loved one saw various casting changes and had several notable behind-the-scenes details. Originally, the role later played by Franco Nero in The Mercenary was intended for him. However, due to disagreements, he dropped out, leading to Nero taking on the part. Initially, Phil Silvers was set to portray Mr. Kenton in The Loved One. However, this role eventually went to someone else. The personal life of one of the individuals involved in The Loved One also held significant events. His first wife, Janet Murray, passed away in 1935 from pneumonia. Tragically, their older son, David, also faced an untimely demise in 1964 due to a cerebral hemorrhage. Janet, who hailed from a wealthy family in small-town Iowa, rests there alongside their second son, who sadly died shortly after birth. These aspects shed light on the complexities and intricacies surrounding the loved one and the lives intertwined with its production. 